Welcome back. Let's talk about pulse width modulation. So sometimes a digital out is all you need, just setting something high or setting something low. That's the only two states you want. Uh, but sometimes you're going to need to generate a square wave. And we'll talk about why later. And what a square wave output is called, it's called pulse width, pulse width modulation. Other platforms will call it analog out, but that's not really what it is. Really, it's a square wave coming out. In order to send a square wave out, there are two pieces of information you need to know. What is the frequency of the square wave that you're generating, uh, which could just be expressed in terms of the number of cycles per second. You could also say it in terms of it's equal to, uh, you know, one over the period. Um, and so the period is just, you know, the time between rising edges. So one over the period is the frequency. You know, how fast is this thing going? Then the other thing is, what is the high time percentage? So the high time percentage is called the duty cycle. So you hear this term a ton, right? So duty cycle. So this one you can tell it's on for half the time um, and then it's off for half the time. This one right here would be a 50% duty cycle. So these are pretty easy concepts, but we'll go ahead and use another slide just to kind of talk about them. So here is an example of all of these are at a 50% duty cycle. Um, but they have different frequencies, right? So this one, you know, starts low, goes high, um, does one cycle in one second. So that's a one hertz signal. Uh, this guy has two complete cycles, two hertz. I think you see the pattern, right? So four cycles, four. Uh, and then if you count this guy, there are eight cycles in one second. So that's an eight hertz signal. I think you've got the idea on frequency. Uh, duty cycle, also pretty simple. So if you were to say that you had a 10% duty cycle, that would mean you were high for only 10% of the time, and then you were low for 90%, right? Um, and so that's a 10. And, you know, that goes up. So a 50-50, um, you know, you just split it, split it fairly. Um, and then a 90% duty cycle, you can see is high for almost all of the time. So there's a 90, a 50, and a 10% duty cycle. Also, just to mention it on this slide, the uh, frequency is the same, right? So each of these, while having different duty cycles, um, you can see that the rising edge matches up. So you can see that it's totally possible to separate frequency from duty cycle. There are two PWM outputs on the pick that we use. Uh, so they are called CCP1. Uh, stands for Compare, Capture, I don't know, something like that. Um, so the Compare, Capture pin. There's a CCP1 and a CCP2. Uh, CCP1 magically comes out on RC2. That's not really a big deal. Analogs, they work with RA0. Uh, PWM, they picked RC2. That's just where they come out. If you want to use the second one, now this is kind of confusing, the second one comes out on RC1. Um, also, technically, you could make it come out on RB3, but to be honest, we will never do that, right? The default is uh, RC1, and we're going to always use the default. So there's two that come out. The main one comes out on RC2, um, and then if you really need a second one, there is one more. I like to use something. I like to get to an example as quickly as possible. So let's look at the library functions. So you need one library function to set the frequency, that's actually open PWM, and you need another to set the duty cycle. Um, as you may guess from the name, set DC PWM, that's for set the duty cycle. All these others are things that you don't care about. Uh, so you can look at them if you want, you're definitely not gonna close it. Um, some of them the chip doesn't have, some of them we just not don't wanna use. Either way, you don't care. Uh, setting the frequency, setting the duty cycle, those are the only two things you need. So let's look at those two in more detail. Uh, the first one is open PWM. There are um, a number of functions for it, but we only have two PWMs. So we're going to only ever use open PWM1 and open PWM2. What this does is this sets the frequency. I kind of hate that the name is open PWM because if you ever need to change the frequency, you need to call open again, but really it just sets the frequency. That's all it does. You pass it, there's an example down here, you pass it one parameter. Uh, that parameter is a char, so something from the range of 0 to 255. 
Um, it says char, but I think of it as an unsigned char. What you're passing in here is a number of timer ticks. There's some really good notes in here. Um, the PWM works with timer two. It's just hardwired for timer two. The thing you're passing in is how many timer ticks is the frequency going to be based on. So how many timer ticks is one period uh, for this PWM. And we'll talk about the math in the next video lecture. So you also, whenever you use the PWM, you also have to open timer two. Timer two is actually surprisingly easy. Uh, the only thing you really care about is the prescaler. Um, you're not going to use interrupts on it. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff that you can ignore. Um, and with only three prescalers, every time you open timer two, it's going to look like one of these three lines, right? So it's either going to be with a one to one prescaler, a four to one, or a 16 to one. Um, so just pick your line, right? So you're going to have one of these three, you know, only one uh, every time you use the PWM. The other function that you're going to use is to set the duty cycle. It's pretty simple. Uh, again, there are, looks like there's a bunch of them, but we only have two PWMs on our microcontroller. So we're going to say set DC PWM for, for PWM channel one uh, or for channel two. The only thing you have to know is that it's 10 bit. So you might expect to set the duty cycle from like zero to 100, but instead you actually set it from zero to 1023. Um, so it's kind of, it's similar to analogs in that, in that fashion. So if you wanted a 10% duty cycle, uh, you would pass in the number 102. If you wanted a 50% duty cycle, you would pass in the number, you know, 512, right? So pretty simple. You just have to know what the percentage is out of. It would kind of be easier if it was just 0 to 100, but that's not how it works. It goes to 1023. So, deal. Let's make a project. Uh, so let's make a new project. So go ahead and fire up MPLAB. Uh, I've got my board connected here, so I should be good to go there. Uh, I would like for you to follow along, so make sure you uh, can actually do these things. Uh, same drill as always, right? Pick 18F, 4520. Maybe you've done this a couple times by now. And I'm going to use my Pick Kit 3. I've got it plugged in, so I can just select it. I'm going to use the compiler. Um, and I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, PWM Lecture. We're going to build off of this in later parts, so I'm just going to call it PWM Lecture. Uh, we're going to use a template. There's no reason for interrupts, so we'll just say PWM Lecture. Uh, we don't even need the, uh, the LCD, so you don't have to add that. So anytime you use uh, PWM, you've always got to include timers. Um, and of course, you've got to include uh, pwm.h as well. Cool, so those two includes uh, are just kind of givens. Uh, next thing we need to do is down in main, we're going to write some code. So we're going to say open timer 2, uh, and we're going to say timer interrupts uh, off, and we're going to say t2 uh, prescaler. There's also a thing called a post scaler. Don't even worry about that. Um, I'm going to pick the frequency this time. You just have to type what I'm typing, right? Uh, and then we'll say open PWM1. Uh, we'll open it with 141. And we'll explain what that is later. And then we will set the duty cycle to, um, let's set it to 10% right now. Uh, what this is going to do is this is going to make the buzzer go off. Um, the buzzer is quite annoying. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a little time period. Uh, I don't know, let's do two seconds. Um, and then after that, I'm going to turn the buzzer off. So I say make a duty cycle of 10%, uh, buzz for one whole second, two whole seconds, uh, and then just turn off uh, and do nothing after that. Great, so I go ahead and run this guy. I download it to my board prepare myself for an annoying uh, message. <laughs> uh, so I get rid of that. Um, and so now it is downloading to my board. So you can hear my buzzer went off for two seconds. I don't know how well the audio came through, uh, but I could hear it. Um, so that's it, right? So that's uh, what we wanted to do to introduce you to PWM. We'll talk more about the math of the details uh, for how you do the frequencies and some of the applications next time. All right, see you then. Bye.